Hey guys, it's Matt Light, and welcome to another episode of the Matt Light Podcast. This is episode 35, performed live here at the Gateway Studios, the gateway.media. What do you want us to do? I don't know what the slogan is. <laughs> Alongside me here is Dustin Dowling. Dustin, welcome back to the podcast. I thought we took a week off, but we actually didn't. No, that's why I asked you. Yeah. Are we off this week? And you're like, pod! No, like, let's do right. it. There's a lot of good pod, things. Pod, pod. Steelers need six different things to happen in order to get into the playoffs yeah, right now. you are all I about it. I am all in. They're I'm ready to go. To I went to the game on Sunday, Saturday. I will tell you this, man. Um, you know... There was probably 30, 35,000 people, not that many people there. They were louder than any other team. I mean, any other group of fans that I've seen all year. Because if you were there, you were there. You were a hardcore fan. You were there. You were yeah. there. Uh, Ian's were there for Franco. <laughs> Ian's were there for Kenny, Big Ken. You were oh, Big Ken. Big Ken. <laughs> Big Ken Roethlisberger. You were just there. You were just there to be there. Uh, I went with my buddy, uh, Bill Crawford. We had a good time. And... We uh, we went to the game and I have not had that much fun in a really long time. It just felt like a like a family reunion, right? It's like all the real fans are there. Yeah, the, like uh, everyone yeah, there yeah. you respected, and even the Raven or Raiders fans, they knew like we're not talking trash at all this game. Oh wow! Because of Franco, because of everything. Wow, that's true. Yeah. It was just, and that was that was pretty sad, man. Um, <laughs> You know, Franco passing away. Oh, I'm sorry. I was laughing about the. It was sad. sarcasm. Yeah, no, no. I thought it was. Sad oh, that, that they, they weren't talking they trash. They weren't talking trash. Yeah, Matt might have had to beat up some of Raider Nation <laughs> yeah. or whatever they're called, the Black Hole. No, I'm sorry. Yes, it was sad. My my laugh was. It was timing. And uh, I saw a really interesting fact: the last interception of the game, uh, he threw the ball with 32 seconds left, and we intercepted at the 32 yard line. I did not notice that. Yeah, my buddy actually, who's a big uh, Steelers fan, he bet he bet 1972 on the lottery all week. It hit two days ago. <laughs> Franco dies at 72, 1972. I mean, it's just, it's a lot, right? It's like the Lincoln Kennedy. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's crazy. YouTube's I mean, it's going to change because of this. It's going to be nothing with those kind of conspiracy The algorithms, videos. yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, the, the and, algorithms. uh, one of the things I did hear, though, is that they said that, uh, you know, Franco uh, Franco was really worried he wanted Frenchie Fuqua to be there because of his health. Mm. And he's like, I hope he's really there. You know, Frenchie was the guy who the ball didn't hit off of, but he was hit by Jack Tatum. Right, right. And Frenchie was there, man. And uh, it's, it was I, – we cried. I cried. I, I cried. I laughed. I cheered. That game had – Everything. Mm -hmm. It was the perfect Pittsburgh day, right? It was cold. It was miserable, but we were all still so happy. Christmas Eve, you know, we saw Dana and Doc at, you know, with the, the uh, that's uh, the wife and son of Franco with the, it was sad. I mean, it was, it was really sad. I don't know them, but like just seeing, you know, it happen within a week. It is kind of crazy how the moments came together. Well, yeah, and it's not like they have time to really grieve. Yeah, it was like celebrate. It almost. was just, it was like go, 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 go. And then this week is when they can really let it sink in. Yeah. That things are going to be different. Um, but shout out to Franco. I know uh, he was with us for that game, 100%. I mean, the way that we won in dramatic fashion. Very, very much like that game. I mean, 1972, we won 13 to 7. This game, final drive, we won 13 to 10. It is crazy this year. Well, just because of the quarterback situation, probably mostly, but the s score being so low. Like, I was, I'm like, oh, is it one, another one of those games? But then if you just watch those last couple of minutes, you're like, wow, wow. But one of those games was one of those games that I think we wanted. Mm -hmm. Because everything, the scoreboard was retro. It was like digital. It was you know the uh, like the black and, and brown. Oh, you know, okay. Little, it was really cool, man. Like that's cool. It was it was ah. it was awesome. Uh, and then for Renegade, it went it went off and like replays and stuff. But it was it was awesome. It so was, was like the Steelers just put like a filter over the whole game, yeah, like a retro filter. It was awesome, dude. <laughs> the end zones were painted yellow, which by the way, please do it year round, okay? I know that Pitt plays there, but Pitt's gold too. Mm -hmm. Give us our gold end zones back. Well, isn't it 
it's gold and pits like yellow. It's it doesn't not, matter. I don't remember. Because here's why it doesn't matter okay. though, because it's Heinz Field. Mm-hmm. It's not Panther Stadium. You guys had a stadium. It's not Heinz Field, actually. But. Hey, it's Acroshore. <laughs> By the way, that name, it, it, I really love it. Well, now you can say it in your Yinzer voice. And that's why, yeah, yeah. Acrishore that's what happened. Stadium. As soon as you switched over to your Yinzer impression doing it, I could tell your way of like, oh, yeah, I, I like this One, it sounds cool. Two, it reminds me of like Batman vibes because the sign is like black with like, like faded Arkham. gold. <laughs> yeah. Acrosher. Like it's, it's, I love it, dude. And I, and you know, I have that joke about it, about saying like, you know, um, oh, you're upset about the name change, $150 million. I go, for 15 years, your name could be I Eat Fucking Cum, and you would change it to that. <laughs> it's just a name change, you know what I mean? I don't know if I would prefer for my name to be that. Right. For how much money? $150 mil. You yeah. would, you would, I would, I could, I guarantee you for $150 million, yeah. I could make your first name a racial slur, <laughs> and you'd have to deal with it, and you'd have to explain to people what your name was. Oh, I'd have to go it's pronounced this. Uh, I don't. That's so tough because you're just—it's such a drastic life change. Like, right? Yeah. Here's the thing, though: you have 150 million dollars. You don't have to see anybody if you ever want to. <laughs> no one. The only time you'll be reading that is in the mail. You just get mail. Blank. It's like a very lonely. Blank Dowling. I don't know which one it would be. Which slur would we have to do an audience poll? Maybe. Yeah. All right. So let's audience we, poll. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. Cancel Un- all these people. We got one month. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a GoFundMe to raise 150 million dollars. Once we get 150 million dollars, Dustin, we're gonna come up with five racial slurs, and and the audience is gonna vote which one you have Please to legally start change it to. These at, at Matt Light Comedy, and uh, <laughs> his email is Matt. At- <laughs> Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah, I had a pretty good Christmas. It's a little chill more than I think than the last two years. I think because everyone was in such a panic the last two years to have like such a real Christmas. Yeah. In case we were all going to die. This one was like toned down. What did you do? The Cindy's always did. Just go to the family, have the So you're, are your parents split up? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so is one a New Year's Eve, one a yeah, Christmas Yeah, so my dad's I mean, like Christmas the Christmas Eve, Eve okay. thing, and then my mom has uh, Christmas Day afternoon. Okay. But at the same time... Um, me and my daughter's mom are split apart, so like okay. we kind of split the Christmas day. That's tough. Day. Yeah, so it's but we've, we've done it for an, a long enough time. Yeah, it's kind of all right. So. What what was the? Uh, how old are you? <laughs> okay, I'm forty. Uh, Thirty nine. Thirty nine. Do you 40. still get presents from your parents? Yeah, they usually get me something. What do you get? I think my dad upgraded me on some tools because I lost my tools during the pandemic. Can you? Uh, are you the tool man? I, I, now uh, I am. He got me some good shit. Can you? you know? Do you know how to use tools? Oh, yeah. I can. I really? Can, yeah, yeah. Is that the country boy in you or just? That's probably my dad, like, forcing me to, like, you better know how to fix your own shit, you know? Yeah, my dad always wanted me to, and I would go with him. I would mm-hmm. do side jobs with him. He would pretty much pay me to babysit me because <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> not do- the only time I ever did like actual manual labor was actually with my dad. It was Ben Roethlisberger's rookie season. It was his first preseason game because we, hey, because we was all listen- your timelines hey, is cause, Steelers related because we were listening to it on the radio. <laughs> we were waiting for Big Big Ben, and uh, we were gutting a house. Mm-hmm. And gutting a house is a lot of fun. You ever got a house? Well, you're destruct- it's dude, destructive. You're just you're destroying. Dude, crap. I was running through shit like Joey Porter, just like shouldering walls, <laughs> going through those little pieces of wood, yanking them out. <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, I only got like ten bucks an hour, which I I think Fred lowballed me a little bit. Ten bucks an hour. How old were you? Uh, this was two thousand four. Oh no, you're good, man. I was getting paid. Was that good money? Oh yeah, I think I was getting paid less than that in two thousand. I don't know, Fred. Ten dollars an hour for. How old were you? Uh, four, 15. Yeah, yeah. You're, 15 you're fine. It's good? Yeah, that's actually good money. I remember I had, a, yeah, I remember I had a job interview. My first ever job interview was data processing for eight seventy seven an hour. Don't know what that means. Uh, I did data processing. Offered me the like job immediately. $7. It's just typing. It's just, you're just putting numbers into like. Yeah, I, I, I was like, nah, I'm just going to work at bingo once a week. <laughs> you ever get, you ever get fired? Oh, no. I finally fell. Did you ever get fired from a job? Uh, sort of. I did kind of like a temp job during college, and I just wouldn't show up to it and try yeah. to, like, log in my hours without showing up. <laughs> I've been fired twice. 
not necessarily fired, but like released because they were contracts. Released. They were contracts. Okay, yes. One of them was with you. Do you remember? No, I don't. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 channel four. WTA. TAE, yeah. We yeah. had to. So if you guys don't remember, back when I wasn't Matt Light the goat, I was just Matt Light trying to be the goat. <laughs> we uh me and Dustin used to do a bunch of videos and then WTAE had a did they reach out to us? It was funny. We both applied for the job not knowing it. And then one day we were just like on the phone, like, hey, I'm applying for this or I got this job. And you're like, I also got that job. And I was like, are you kidding and me? And then we literally walked in like Step Brothers. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna fuck shit up. Oh, uh, we did too. And there's a picture of that or a video of that outside. It's such a weird experience. I yeah. know we talked about it on the podcast before, but I kind of get angry about it. By the way, I'm still blocked from Facebook on commenting from TAE. I mean, what did you say? I think during or afterwards, <laughs> I was a little aggressive. Just I was still like the same comments I would always post. Yeah. Because you know what they, the crap, the news they put. It's just like, yeah. it's like, it's clown shit. Well, they got rid of you because you were a spaz crybaby. You flipped. Well, that wasn't the reason they got rid of me. They got rid of every, they switched everybody over at the same time. And I also asked for way more money. Yeah. And I didn't flip on them. I flipped on the crazy chick who flipped on me first. Daisy. Yeah. I, I, ha I, I took the phone call like this. I was like, oh, hello. And she was like, Ray! And then I went like off who on her. Who are you her. talking to? Yeah. yeah, like who the fuck do you think you're talking to? And then I went off on the other two women, like Abby I'm, and I mean, I think it was just mostly Abby. I didn't go off on them. And then so it was so funny about yeah. that is they gave us an iPhone Seven Plus, which Call was like me a, a spaz, a sick phone oh, at the spaz. time. Look, like, you're spazzing out about being. Well, it's because I hate that word. Like, I, <laughs> See, cause out. you're spaz. These people definitely deserve <laughs> being yelled at. All right. I just like bringing out the best of you. Oh, I just because it's that crap where you get to a level, you're like, I finally in some kind of position. Yeah, some 23 year old all clowns bitch and jokes who doesn't understand yeah. anything. And yeah, well, you should be doing suck yeah. my ass. No clue. The chick had no clue. Yeah. about anything. Well. I remember that, and then so I got released. Do you remember why I got yeah, released? Yeah, you got released. Because <laughs> you basically did a commercial for like a porno or, yeah. some, or something. Uh, Adult DVD Empire <laughs> was like, hey, Matt, do you want to be in a commercial? And um, I was a like, big fan of yours. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah, like, we're sure. going to pay you. And I was like, all right, so what's going to happen? So they're like, Danny Daniels, who's a porn star, you're, we're going to film at a <laughs> – dude – I had to explain this to my girlfriend at the time that I'm shooting a commercial. No, you got a commercial. How much? I'm like, it's like three fifty. She's like, oh, that's not bad. That's cool, right? What are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just gonna pour coffee while a um, porn star licks pumpkin or licks cherry pies and walks up to me completely naked. And that's, legit. Uh, that's so, real legit. So what happened was we were at. I, rem I remember shooting this dude. So funny. Um, I think this is when I realized like I had a thing with porn stars. Oh. <laughs> Not like <clears throat> it seems late in life to realize this, man. No, like. I mean like that I got along with them. Okay, like oh. our schedules and everything. Oh, all it's right. like real life. Yes, like we we all get it, and like it's all an act, pretty much. Like we're all in on it, and and we were comfortable. Like I was. What's so cool about that and like strip clubs? I feel like I'm always comfortable being there. Because I know I'm not the shittiest person there. Right? There's always somebody that goes above and beyond. So when I'm there, I'm the timid person. But if I go to McFadden, it's like, oh, Matt's a piece of shit. No more fucking White Claws for him. He's, you know what I mean? He's, you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he literally just took a handful of the... The bathroom attendant's candy and You're walked out. You're not getting out. shut off at the right. strip club, right? They're just They're like, not keep going. Matt Light They're off like, at the strip there's club. nothing that I could do there that they haven't seen before. <laughs> but I remember doing that commercial. I remember sitting there, and the thing was, the today's special is, and it said you, and then the music was all like, dun -dun 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 -dun, and she comes over and she like rips her shirt, psh, boobs out, and then like I didn't know she wasn't gonna have pants on. Mm -hmm. So I watched this video for the first time like three years ago, <laughs> and it was just privates in my face, like, and I didn't realize how close they were, especially because of the angle they put it at. So funny. Want to hear the first time I ever got fired from a job? Yeah, sure. First time I ever got fired from the job. Let's see if you can guess who fired me. Okay. Look at my hat. Okay, it's the Steelers. It's the Steeler hat. Who fired me? I don't know. How can I know from the Steeler hat? I got fired 
from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh. When I was 13 years old. Okay. So <laughs> I might have heard the story, but I don't remember it. There was a, I remember going to McDonald's. And by the way, this is kind of just like how I won Nick or Treats. Okay. You know, you fill out things, this is what happened. I was at McDonald's one day, every day actually, but the one day I was there, <laughs> there was a ticket that said, Would you like to be a host of a Steelers television show? You must be between the ages of 11 and 14, right? I'm like, Hey, 13, right there, give me a job. So <clears throat> I wrote my name down. They called four. I think like 4,000 people to come down and interview at Heinz Field, audition for it. Uh, I made it to the, through the first round. Then they called me the next day like, we love you. Come down again. They were asking me Steeler facts. And at 12 years old, dude, no, 12, 13 years old, nobody knew as much as I did. about the, Nobody knew as much about the Steelers as I did. <laughs> Tremendous people. Cordell Stewart. Vermontu motherfucker. Whatever his name is. The Hawaiian. <laughs> so like... You know the big fat Hawaiian guy? Aluka laka 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 <laughs> playoffs. He did it against the Browns. Tremendous game. I was there. So, <laughs> so I um I make it to the finals. I'm I'm the Elite Eight and I'm now hired on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very comfortable in front of the camera now. Usually we do things and it's one take, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you've helped me so much. Um when I was 13. Scared shitless. Mm. Just, I, because I was in front of a live audience, and then, like, they never gave me the script to see beforehand. Oh, shit. So I had no idea. And I'm reading off a teleprompter, and, like, one of the things I had to answer was, like, the, the hypocycloid. I couldn't pronounce that word. And the audience kept saying it. Saying, I'm like, whatever, three diamonds. Right, and at that age, you're, like, you're frustrated. Like, you why can't, can't you right. replace that word? Why did you, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, I'm on this TV show. I'm asking serious questions about training camp and stuff like that. And there's kids that are like, what's your favorite Gatorade flavor? Fuck you, dude. But then you're going to pull a fucking risotto on me and make me like Z's, Z hypocycloids. Yeah. And just screw up completely. That's so funny. Like, they wouldn't, it's a 13 year old kid, yeah. like, under pressure. <laughs> and they get so mad. You know who was a dick? Jeff Fursella. Really? Was the main host, the weatherman. And he okay. would get so mad at the crowd. And they would bring in, like, youth football kids there. To be like, hey, we're North Hills Indians. Go football. He'd be like, yeah, shut the fuck up. Like, he just was like a, he was a prick. <laughs> he was right. such a prick. The, the weatherman's always a prick. The weatherman is always hey, a prick. Hey, except for Joe DiNardo. Hey, Joe DiNardo. He said he would. But I just, uh... Dude, I, I I just remember like being afraid of him, and I remember like I met a lot of Steelers. Cordell was one of the coolest Steelers I ever met. Uh, I was like, hey, we have matching socks. He's like, cool, dude. But he was cool about it. Uh, Antoine Randall was super awesome. Joey Porter was awesome. Joey Porter was on the show. I wasn't even the I wasn't even the host of that episode. And my dad would go to every single one of these. And my dad is a big reason on why I got fired, because like they're like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, your linebacker number fifty five, Joey Porter. My dad would be like. Joey, <laughs> give him the fucking boot. Yeah. <laughs> like literally give him the fucking boot on a live recorded show at the Great Hall before the drum better show. <laughs> give him the fucking boot. <laughs> and they were and they, I remember them being like, who is that guy? And I'm like, I can't be like, Don't know. Who I can't is that be like, guy? get him I, out of here. I can't be like my dad. Because <laughs> I know you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> So then I remember one time, one of the players couldn't make it. He was sick. We had another person fill in. And I'm getting my makeup done, which I didn't need any. I was good looking even then. But just for the shine. Yeah, good looking. No, nobody, nobody needs makeup. <laughs> you do. You're ugly. Horseface needs makeup. Stormy Daniels storming into the playoffs. <laughs> Pittsburgh. Um, so I get, I, I'm doing makeup, and I'm like, who's our guest today? And uh, they're like, Todd Peterson. At the time, Todd Peterson was our kicker for, like, one season. He was the last guy before they brought in Jeff Reed. And I go, oh, he fucking sucks. You said that verbatim? The, my exact words. Ah, oh, he fucking sucks. <laughs> Guess who was behind me getting his makeup done at the same time as me? <laughs> Your kicker, number two, Todd Peterson. Dude, they were like... <laughs> they, like everybody looked at me. The record stopped. 
Rick comes over to me. He's like, dude, we got to talk. He's like, you can't say that a guest sucks. And I was like, you couldn't get anybody else? <laughs> I mean, you could have got the guy that gets the tea off of his shitty at kickoffs. And I would have been more interested. So then the, I have two strikes on me already. Today, yeah, right. right. Now you got two strikes. And there's eight people that they have. And I know they're going to cut it down. Well, Steelers end up going to the playoffs that year. We That was the, the wild card game where we came back from Cleveland. Uh, in Cleveland and, and Foo. Hey, Foo. Uh, we won the game. Well, we wanted tickets to that game because – the deal that I got was, like, really shitty for TV. People don't realize there's not a good budget uh, for television. Oh, yeah. I was getting $50 to do voiceovers. I was getting 75 to film beyond camera talent those days. So there's no money, man. There was no money at that time. And my parents lost money taking me to— I mean, TAE, they were paying us less, less than $7 an hour. No, not me. What were you getting? I was getting 15 an hour. Not getting 15 hours. Yes, I was. You're a liar. You're yes, a I was. Liar. We talked about this. No, I work. was getting 15 an hour and they were going to bump it to 20. They didn't pay anybody that. I got that. There's no way. Then I'm, maybe I'm thinking it was 12. You're thinking of you're thinking of somewhere else. That's no way. I don't think. I Dude, don't I'm telling that, you. I don't remember them paying you more than anyone else. I remember having this no, discussion. No, I, 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 well, what was I going to tell you? I make more than you guys? I don't know. I, because, no, anyways, I, we're, I'm sorry. Anyway, I jumped to, yeah. So, anyways. We go to this playoff game, uh, and I want to go to the game. And my dad's like, oh, we'll call them and ask for tickets. Because they didn't give you shit. They gave you one Steelers game to go to a year with field passes, and then they'd pay you 75 an episode. So you, you, like, I, got a, I got a check at the end of the year for 675 Like, what the fuck? Like, that's terrible. Like, the guys that make— the, the, It's not like you had an agent or anything. Yeah, but the four-year-olds that are sewing their jerseys in Indonesia— Made more money than I did. I'm an on-air talent at 13, okay? You're also 13 years old. They ain't paying you shit. No so I bought a gas-powered scooter with that fucking thing. <laughs> it was awesome. But no, that game, I remember my dad calling. He's like, hey, listen. I'm not asking for any for handouts. But if you just got any extra tickets, you let me know. I'll pay for them. Fred, to the Steelers, you know they fucking have them. You don't have to say, like, they'll be like, hey, listen. Can you, get, can you guys hook it up? Mm-hmm. And he should have never asked, but yeah, after the season, like, hey, we're going to go our separate ways. Um, the show was on for three more years. Well, two years later, they drafted Ben, and they were at the draft for that. And one of the fat Fox interviewed Ben, and it made me so mad. Because I knew Ben was going to be a rock star when we drafted him. Uh -huh. Like, I wanted Ben at, like, 15 years old. So, yeah, those were the two times that I got fired from a job. And it, it was... It, it couldn't have been anything else, right? Yeah. Like, regular jobs I would never get fired at because I do the bare minimum. I, I keep my mouth shut, and I don't cause shit. Right, that's true. But right. one of those jobs... And you got to actually show up and, like, yeah. oh, be, like, oh, wait, was that Matt's real personality? Get right. him out of yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the shit. Do you believe in um, New Year's resolutions, and have you ever committed to them? I don't believe in a resolution. I have sometimes used just because it's a year round to reset goals or mindsets of like, I want to do this shit mm -hmm. this year. But I'm not like that. Oh, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to stop eating sandwiches. And I'm. You want to hear one of my worst jokes sure. of all time? Yeah. <laughs> I probably heard this one a lot. You probably still use it. No, I've, I've, I quit using this. This was, uh, this was back in when Yahoo was more popular than Google. Oh, wow. Uh, this joke never worked. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I it's guess. Pretty fucked up. Here we go. We're gonna do it here. Hey guys, you know, like I'm so excited about New Year's. Everyone has a New Year's resolution. Mine is to lose weight. And I was reading Yahoo. Yahoo said the easiest way to lose weight in 2008 is by dancing. Okay. It's the quickest way, which makes a lot of sense because everyone I know that does the YMCA has AIDS. Isn't this joke on? Did you do that joke on your set when you were dressed up like Shawn Michaels? Yeah, yeah, you did. I, a, it's not like that exactly. Because I swear I sent you a clip about the wife. I yeah, yeah. I did it. 
It, for one, only because of the Shawn Michaels pants. Okay, maybe that's why it's funnier because you're dressed. It is in the such outfit. a fucking mean joke. <laughs> okay, you canceling yourself. But I think it's good. And nobody ever laughed at it. Like my other joke. Oh, like so you like you legit kept trying. You're starting to get pissed because like, it just wasn't hitting. And open mics, they hitting. would laugh. And at real shows, that show it did well. The other joke that I had was, uh, and I just don't even say anything. I just go, "Do you think midget porn is a Nicorette patch for pedophiles?" <laughs> and I think it's so, that was great. What are you talking about? I think about? it's so fucking oh. funny. <laughs> I, Jeff Dijet. No, for a second. I think it's so funny. Oh, that's terrible and, and hilarious. And, and <laughs> dude, people are just like, ugh. Oh, I was like, well, enough. what part? That's fine. Yet, see, you gotta have some kind of follow up because you get them. You get that cringe. Oh no, I just great. stare at them and smirk. <laughs> I just go, I'm let, I'm letting it <laughs> let, fucking marinate, let it fermate. Just like get yeah. out there. We're just making up words today on the podcast. But I had my resolution. Oh. I, the, I only had really one was uh, back when I did Rough and Rowdy, I didn't drink the whole month of, uh, I did a dry January. Yuck. It was awesome. Dude, I, my, my, when you stop, lies when today. you stop drinking, your body feels so good. Oh, it is a crazy feeling if you have gone for a while and then you get past that withdraw withdrawal hump. Yeah. You know, same with smoking weed. You get past that hump, you're like, Oh, I'm a functioning human yeah. being. This feels great. I ate I healthy. Drugs. I, I I ate healthy and I didn't drink from December to February 1st. And then after I got my fucking clock cleaned, I went out and had a glass of wine. Because <laughs> I thought it was classy. <laughs> You're a classy man after that. Um, do you ever do? You never did a resolution? What are your goals? What is Dustin Dowling's goals? For 2023, uh, I got. I want to get this business going with a couple of podcasts, and I want to start doing stand-up shows. In producing or producing doing shows. telling jokes? No shows. Producing. Are you gonna host? Ah, uh, probably not. No. no Is I'm, it the house I'm, party one? Yeah, it's the house party one where I'm gonna set up some. Uh, the real nice camera and start doing this whole thing. You know, I think your idea is really good because what and I sell art. That's like the biggest part of it, the whole thing is selling the art that's actually in in the space. Who's who's making the art? Uh, uh, my girlfriend and some other people. That's cool. Yeah. What what type of art does she do? It's whatever. So it's gonna be. We're thinking about themed. So it's like whatever show will be like some kind of. Right now, there's a bunch of pictures of animals with long. Can legs, I get can I legs. can I get paid in art for a show? That's a good question. I didn't think about that. Maybe we should do. That. Can she do people? Uh, no, no. Like you mean like act? I mean, she could. I don't know what you would look like. That'd be even fucking funny. I know. Funnier. That's what I keep trying to explain to her. I'm like, it doesn't... doesn't ma matter. It doesn't matter. As long as it's for me. Right. Exactly. I want it. Exactly. Or, like, put put my... Like, make me an animal, yeah, but yeah. make it, like, a human animal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I would love that. No, I, I think it's good, because you know what I, I... I'm very spoiled, but I'm not... Like, I earned what I what I get, mm -hmm. but, like, people are doing shows for twenty fifteen twenty dollars $15, You mean, like, 15 Stand up. I mean, they're getting paid that Yeah. Much. Okay, okay. I was like, 15, 20 that's insane to like, me, that's bro. Okay. Yeah, but people used to do showcases for free, so. No, I mean, but I'm saying like, the, like, like their weekend gig, like, yeah, I got a show. I'm I'm driving like six hours to make twenty bucks. I think that was always there, and that's just that those, you know, everyone just goes to, to that say road. that I'm going on the road. Yeah, to that, say that I'm doing. I it. don't think that's new or old. That's just obviously newer. I just news. you know I just forget what it's like. Yeah. Being a shitty poor comedian. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? And it's completely different. Like, I know we talk about social media, but like... Like, I don't think they make four figures a year doing stand-up comedy. Well, this is the other thing, too. You can be, a, like, a stand-up comedian plus something else now, and that can kind of be your job. You don't have to be, like, a famous one or even actually really good at it, and you can still make... A little bit of money, or maybe just enough. To, well, stand-up like, is it. the money when you're not good at, like, so. If you're good at something else, performance-wise, mm -hmm. then stand-up is your gateway to making money. Yes, yes. Does yes, that make sense? Yes, yeah. I think about that all the time. And vice versa, mm -hmm. if you're really good at stand-up, your way of making money is commercials and bullshits. 
Right. You ever notice you never get paid for what you're best at? Yeah. Well, that used to be the, like, back in the 90s, the whole point was to do stand-up just to get a sitcom. Yeah. It was do stand-up, do a talk show, do Leno or Carson, whatever, before I get yeah. some, and then you get a sitcom. That was, like, the path. Yeah. And, like, that's what everyone just figured out. Oh, this is how I'm going to do it. But now they realize, oh, you can be an actually stand-up comedian forever. You don't never have to go to a show. That could be a, a way to go, too, now. And it's all man-made now. I, mm -hmm. Your path is all man-made. Yep. There's there's no path like there was in the 80s or 90s. And people are like, oh, the Internet's ruining stand-up comedian. I'm like, no, I think it's actually better because I think you have to be better because everybody is showcasing every single day. Everybody's auditioning every single day. There's a new video. People are like, well, memes are taking it away. Why? Because because your your punchline, your your three second punchline is surrounded by a minute and a half mm -hmm. of bullshit to get to it. I when a meme can get right to the punch. Yeah, I see more stand up online than I've ever seen in my entire life. No, a lot of it is really bad crowd work that they do, and that I have really makes me mad. Really, you know, it's funny. I've I've turned a whole way around on that because at first I thought that was the genius. I was like, that's great. Now you can use this stuff that you really. Don't, you don't put out there. People just see. We can make that into content, and it doesn't ruin your material. But now I've seen so much of it. Yeah. And 99% of it it's the same. Is, is garbage. What do you do for a living? Yeah. What do you do for I'm a living? So oh, over yeah? It. So now hey, I'm kind of him? Him? Yeah. 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 It's like I, anyone can do it almost. Dude. Yeah. And you kind of get lucky Wait, How long have you guys been together? <laughs> oh, you guys don't know the same date? Oh. <laughs> whoa. Sleeping in different bedrooms tonight. So now I am starting to Bullshit. see material again. I'm yeah. like, it's the other way around. It's coming back, and then I'm like, that's cool. And now with the uh, captions. Yeah. I'll tell you who's got a handful of pretty good ones is <laughs> Colin Chamberlain. He's been posting, uh, and Colin he posts lives. nonstop. Yeah. Colin lives in New York City. Um, he's from Pittsburgh, and they're actually doing a show tomorrow night. Uh -oh. Ray, Ray also. Ray will, will post some stuff. I like when they post ma material, man. I, I really do, because, like, for me, like, I don't get to see Colin that much anymore because he doesn't live here. Ray, same thing. And so, like, it's cool because, like, they're always writing. Colin's always writing. Oh, yeah, 100%. So where, like, I'll see these clips from, like, two months ago, and then he'll be here, what, tomorrow? And I won't hear one of those jokes. Actually, as, I'm like, that's very as impressive. fans of comedy, people that start to follow comedians because of that, because they, they hear a joke— one year and they follow them in the next couple of months they hear the joke and it's different it's like oh, that's really cool it's really interesting you see how it develops yeah you see it develops or just change sometimes you're just bored of it i mean know? you can be doing a joke for years and it change every time i yeah. think mine like now i did all new material when i went to the ugly sweater program. but before that like when i do new uh, older stuff i just reword it i set it up differently every time so that it's easier for me but I got into the point where I, I just, I've outgrown my material. What I talk about is not who I am anymore. The shit I talked about at my show is what's going on in my life right now. That's why stand up so organic. You know, you yeah. go, when you go see music, you're gonna, they're going to go play that song. They might play it a little bit different, but it's that song. You know, my, you know, you know my yeah. Or like they'll, they'll, they'll change the chorus. So like, yeah. it was her fault. He'll be like, it was my stand -up fault. Stand up is real. Yeah, yeah. You're right, they'll change the chorus. You know what I like, mean? Stand up, you can really change it up. What I, what I always get mad about is when you, when you like a music band, right? And then somebody goes, they sold out. Isn't that the goal? The fucking point. These guys make a living off of what we paid five dollars to see now. Good. Be, being a sellout, I think it's, that term is just used wrong. It's being such a sellout bullshit. Is when you like make stuff like with no intention of art, or like you just kind of hate just to being make a some sellout. Money. It's, it's, it's is being in a band that is so good that hasn't hit where it hits, and then you're like, I'm done with this. I'm going to go be a banker. That's a sellout. <laughs> I guess I don't think of it in that terms. But yes. Okay. If you're still doing music and you're still doing what you love, you're, you want to make a living off of it one way or another, right? Mm -hmm. Like Berg Bus, for example. It's not necessarily stand-up comedy. I do some stand-up comedy on there. I do crowd work. I do that. But people are like, Matt, you only do stand-up in Pittsburgh twice a year now. Why the fuck would I? Yeah. Why, why would I burn you guys out, make you hear the same thing when every night 
I can give you a different experience. And you have a great time. That doesn't make me a sellout. Like, my favorite band is Bring Me the Horizon. And when I first heard them, I, I heard them from one of the girls I was dating. And they scared the shit out of me. Because they're like, <laughs> and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? Right? Uh -huh. Then I started to like it. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I oh, my God, this is crazy. I love this. Mm -hmm. And then... They got into like adding more electronic to it, then more chorus, more singing. And now they're doing collaborations with Ed Sheeran and Machine Gun Kelly. And people are like, they sold out. They're not who they were. Dude, you try screaming every single night for, for 90 days. Because, yeah. you know, on summer they're on Warp Tour, whatever tours they're doing. And then try and do it again and again and again and again. And also, they're not upset 19-year-old kids that are in their basement going, fuck you, dad. <laughs> their lives are different. They're yeah. dealing with other shit. They're growing. They're, they're redefining themselves, kind of like in professional wrestling. The one guy that I always admired for redefining his career was Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho has had like 15 different characters somehow. Also has been on this show. He's also been on this show. I just think it's, I, I just think if you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. Um, for example, I know we don't bring him up that often, but there's a father figure in the city of Pittsburgh. God, I knew exactly who you were, as soon as you said that. And it's the same thing over and over and over and over again. And what's happening? Less and less and less and less. Financially and views. Mm -hmm. Because you got to switch it up. Now that is something that you can't really switch up. It's got to be the same thing. I mean, you, you brand something else. You got to become another brand. Right. Because that's what it is. But I think they're always going to be your Pittsburgh dad. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. They've had great success with that. I, li I, I like Chris. I think Chris is one of the nicest guys ever. You know they're sponsored by Acershire now, right? I don't give a fuck what they're sponsored by. <laughs> hey. Acershire. They got the Acershire Hey, money. you remember when they were sponsored by Iron City? Not anymore. You know who is? The real Pittsburgh guy. <laughs> Suck it. You're just a hater, Matt. I'm not a hater. I, I, I get what they do. And I and I don't knock it at all. I just think he's a dick. <laughs> That's it. I love when you pull back and then you I, go. I never fuck listen, you bro, off. I never had a problem with the the you know, those Yinzer jokes. They are what they are. Mm -hmm. They work for idiots. <laughs> and that's fine if you like low hanging fucking fruit. But you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying because we've talked about it before. Yeah, we talk about it once a month on this podcast. <laughs> I don't think we talk about. That I just much. I'm trying to get my Jake Paul on. Yeah, you want to get your Jake Paul. I'm trying to get it's somebody. What's really real. It's like you want a boxing mat match between you and Kurt. Hundred percent. Which would I would a hundred percent love to see that. But he I think would, he's, he, he would, would kill you. He would <laughs> kick my ass. I know. And I would love I it. No, it's still worth it. But that's what you want. I know. You want the bad guy. Why don't you guys set it up and then, like, maybe he will take the fall and we'll put all the money on you or something Just like that. Just super kick him. We'll all get together. Sweet chain music. We'll all get together. Hey, listen. Dude, I'll I would, put it on Matt because everyone's going to believe it's on you, Kurt. And, like, we'll, we'll really get it up. I. You know what, though? I honestly think. Here's what I think. This is the truth. If, if I did box Pittsburgh dad, mm -hmm. this is what he has. Stamina. That's it. He's somewhat in shape. I have do not know if he's. I athletic. would punch a hole through his fucking chest. I don't think you could beat me, Matt. So let's let's talk about that. I'll kill you. No, that's not true, bro. You weigh hundred and five pounds. I weigh more than. If that. I connect with you, you're done. You say that, like you like you I've, have such I've, great I've balance. I've fucking you done it. What? At gyms. At gyms. With dudes that were boxing for two or three years. We're going to go to the tape and we're going to see how he swings. You know, if I had that rung up, I'd show it right now. Well, that was different. Okay. That was a fucking 250,000 people we were watching me. We talk about it. Well, I'm not fighting you. 
Because it's a lose lose. Because we'll never do this again. It's a lose lose. You're going to le leak everything I've ever said off camera. <laughs> Cancer You're culture right. will You're right. kill me. Because if, <laughs> if, dude, if you and I ever got into a fight and I, and I kicked your ass, you'd be like, ha <laughs> ha. You're never working again. He said this, 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 this. Check out this screenshot. Oh, and here's nudes of his ex. Boom. <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck? You shouldn't have sent me those. Wow. <laughs> I think, thank you. It's my dad. What am I going to do? <laughs> That's disgusting. I, uh, uh, I, I would love to see so more celebrity fights in I, Pittsburgh. I'm totally all about you kind of Jake Paul in your career from here on out. I think I should. Yeah. So I think you need to start with like pissing somebody off, calling someone out. But a layup. Yeah, but someone that also is gonna like follow through with it. So know? there's no Pittsburgh comedian here that would. No. I think we gotta jump like into some kind of Jordan scene. York would be number one. He would be so perfect. It would be so he good. He would never though. He's well, there he was a never. guy a couple of years ago named uh Zachary Smith. Who started shit with me on Twitter. Some big fat ass with bad knees and a bad back. Who lives at home with his parents and has a podcast that nobody listens to. Um, and he said something smart to me. And then he sent a screenshot of my, me getting knocked out. And, and I was like, cool. When do you want to plan your funeral, fat fuck? Like, <laughs> let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's do it. I'm just trying to think of anyone. And he's like, no, no, no. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. I was like, well, you're a pussy. What do I go after? Like, do I go after like, okay, so what What did Jake Paul do? Jake Paul went after somebody similar to him, a YouTuber, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That so was I'd, the first thing. So I'd have to do somebody in entertainment, then beat up a shitty old, like, like Nate Robinson, right? Uh-huh. So I'd have to like, probably like, fight like fucking Josh Miller, the old punter of the Steelers. <laughs> yeah. That ego. Who you would, gotta find like an old pit who player. Would, who would beat the shit out of me. <laughs> would fucking kill me. And I didn't want to say old shitty like. Because he was always super nice. And he was a great punter for us. <laughs> but is there like a train wreck player that I could just be like. I think the problem is that Jake Paul is a giant. And you are not. And like. That makes it so good though. Because <laughs> if difficult. I win. If I win these fights. Eventually they're going to be like. <laughs> Fight someone. I'm like, what, my own size? They're all bigger than me. You can't hate on what I'm doing. We got to find you somebody. There's no comedian that would make sense because no. there's no draw. No, there's no draw. Well, we don't have to worry about the draw. Maybe it's just getting that first fight out and you beating the shit out of somebody. Is there, dude, is there like a newscaster? Yeah, we got to think of someone like a newscaster. Like a like newscaster. Like, well, now there's got to be some kind of... Listen, Bob Poppy! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does it have to be a, a, a dude? I'm not gonna fight Selena Pompiani. <laughs> it says, Listen, Sienna, I will bring it on. It's me versus you, him versus Bob, two on two tag team. Yeah. And if you lose, then I'm the voice of the penguins. Yeah. <laughs> quack, quack, motherfucker. Meanwhile, that's a duck. Uh, I'm not fighting a girl. What if it is like. Me and you versus someone big. That's wrestling. No, it has to be. It's still boxing. So, like, you're the you, undercard and then I have I one. still have to. No, no, no. Same time. I still have to, like, I can't hit him in the back of the head. I can't. The rules are the same. Only it's two oh, versus like one. Oh, like a handicap match yeah, in boxing. Yeah, two versus one. Bro, I mean, how do we it's lose so that? It's dangerous. We'd be able to kick the We'd shit out We'd end up hitting anybody. each other. <laughs> we would fucking throw haymakers and blast each other. Like in Step Brothers when they hit each other with the bats. I just no, I just like us and our personas, Pittsburgh dad versus the beardy boy versus Matt the mayor. <laughs> well, there's two Pittsburgh dads. <laughs> Wait, how? What do you mean? Well, because there's there's Chris too. Oh, well, I don't. I meant like the just so Kurt, you you Kurt guys in, in but, oh, oh, oh okay. But I he's see the producer, right? Right. So I, you guys, I could take, I could take Chris. You th I don't think. No, he's skinny. He's tall as oh, hell. Oh, I get in there. He's not athletic. He's the clever guy. He's not the athletic. I like person. him. I think he. I think he'd. I think he'd. Oh, that's ass. funny. Uh, <laughs> so funny. How good would what that if be? It wasn't, what if it wasn't boxing? What would be like something that could like, rock be... paper scissors? It's still something. Let physical. me see something. If this is true, let's do rock paper scissors real quick. I okay. learned something okay. about it. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready? All right. We, so Let's on shoot flow. we so like if I go on shoot we we should go. So okay. as I say shoot you show. Right? Best of three or what? Yeah. All right. Rock paper scissors shoot. Okay. 
Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yep, I knew it. Best of three. Oh, I just did it twice. Three. Fuck. Yeah. I fucking, I knew it. That's why. You usually get the two in a row or what? So subconsciously, Rock wins. Uh-huh. Because it's the first one you hear. So you go against Rock. So you either go paper or you go scissors. Also, if you win, you have a 66.6% .6 chance of winning again on what you won the first time. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. And I've, I've used that. We just against, did it. I've used that against people a long time ago where you like, I would constantly win about 60, 70% of the time. And they're like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's that's like, crazy I, that we did that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you have to fight Proven. them now and I don't. <laughs> that's since you lost. Shit. Shit. I got like, who could there be? There's got to be somebody. Does it have to be boxing? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's because it's entertaining. Yeah. Because it's embarrassing. Because neither of us can do it. I, I can't. I have I have fought. That's the but problem. you can't though. Well, I don't know. Like if you trained and you boxed, you would still look like an amateur. Is what I'm saying. You wouldn't. Nobody would pay to go see you. Oh, yes. As just a boxer. Oh yes. That's the entertainment. That's why Rough and Rowdy was so entertaining because it was like. What's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. Some guy's gonna bite his neck, <laughs> you know. So like that's, and it, what else could it be? It would dodgeball, fucking stupid. Kind of like that idea to be. Yeah, honest. but it'd be over in three seconds. You're right. What's the build up? I don't know. We'd have to figure Boxing, it out. Boxing, you could like... have an undercard. You could have a bunch of people doing this. Uh huh. I think we should do it. It would be. Cool. There is one person in Pittsburgh that I would love to. Box, and it's Dejan. Well, how do you say it? Dejan Kavakacek, DK Pittsburgh Sports. Oh, oh, I don't watch those guys. I hate him more than anybody in this city. Why? Explain. When James Conner was drafted by the Steelers, they wanted to do an interview about me, what it meant to me as somebody who had the same doctor, the same disease who's chasing a dream to see somebody's dreams come true. I do the interview. It's an article. It's like a four-page article, right? And it's being released. And I wanted to see it before it got, you know, put up there. So I text the dude. I'm like, hey, Adam, is there any way I can see it? He's like, I just sent it over to be reviewed. Once it's reviewed, I'll send you a link and you can see it. You know, I was like, awesome. DK told him no. And he told me on Twitter. I go, hey, man, I'm just trying to see that article I did. I said on Twitter. He says, you don't have 399 This is like everyone can see these. Yeah. So he, he threw that out there. It's a I don't have $4 to see the article that your fat fucking ass wrote about me. The article that you're making money off of. You didn't he, like, he didn't send you a copy or no. something? No. Such a fucking dickhead about it. it I, he probably thought that you would just put it up yourself. And then people would go to your I page. I literally and... said, I just want to see it for myself. Oh, then, okay, yeah. <laughs> He's a fat cunt. I swear to God, I'm not word. I'm not kidding. If I ever am close to him, mm -hmm. I'm gonna fucking clown him. Am I gonna hit him? No. But I will make him shit his sweatpants. Or whatever fucking McGregor fucking old baseball <laughs> pants the fucking loser wears. Dude, I so, hate him so it's much. Such an insult. Yeah, because he just looks like he's poopy butt. You know what I mean? He just looks like yep. he stinks, like a fucking hoagie. Oh, that's great. I hate him. DK, you want to fight? <laughs> All right, it's happening. It's got to be somebody. Matt there's got to be. There's got to be somebody, sports. right? We're trying to drum some hate, so I'll clip this and I'll just tag every everyone, every Pittsburgh celebrity hey, we know. Hey, if you play, if you played for the Pitt Panthers, fuck you. If you played for here, here you go. Just start like, bit, just naming like every Pittsburgh organization, sports media. Just like go after. Listen, them. LGBT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the marginalized people. Let's start a little higher. Well, let me tell you something, community. <laughs> now, I listen. I. I don't even want to fight, honestly. I just want an easy paycheck. I'm just trying to find a better way to sell out. Yeah, I we're, just, we're bringing it I'm all sick around. of doing stand-up. Can we do something else? <laughs> can do something that lasts like two minutes. I'm in the ring for two minutes. Yeah, and you get know. in, get out. Get out. That's kind of like, I mean, isn't that a little bit what stand-up is? Just to realize, oh, I can just 
get on stage. Yeah, for... but the promoting is a uh, fucking. It's so. We hard, have artificial dude. intelligence now. Just you gotta hook that up. No, you gotta figure that out. People don't get it. Like there's. It is annoying. You gotta you gotta personalize message people. You gotta Always. do stuff. So people are like, oh my god, you made how much money in one night? I'm like, it was three months, dude. Yeah, it was three, three months. months. Of work. It was three months right. of fucking work. I did a lot of work for that show. Right. I did a lot of work for that. Show. You did a lot of work for that. Years, show. a decade of work. For yeah, that show. that's but, true. Yeah. Technically, if you look at the foot. Well, technically. Technically. Tom Brady sucks. Yeah. What the fuck? He's done. Yeah. Do you, but how do you think he's? They're gonna, gonna win a division, back? which is bullshit. How's he gonna? If go we back were in that division, we'd be in first place. Nah, I hate thinking that way. Well, I just did. <laughs> go Steelers. How's okay. he? What? Like, how's he gonna like step out? Because you know he's not gonna be like. Oh, well, he's gonna go out. He's gonna win a division. Because mm -hmm. that division is shit. Uh, I think they're in first place in the division right now. Them and the Saints, I think, are tied. Um, they can still win in the playoffs. But do you think they they're going to kind of game guys. plan to try to make him not look so bad and they rather, like, have him ushered out nicely than maybe win games? you think that might happen? No, because this is his last year. Okay. Because this is his last year as a Buccaneer. He's not coming back as a backup for anyone. Of course not. That'd be, well, I shouldn't say that. Tampa Bay's not going to pay him. Nobody's going to pay for, for him right now. He just does not look good. Um, he doesn't have the offense design. He needs speedy guys. You know, he doesn't have AB. He doesn't have Gronk. He, he just doesn't have what he needs. And he's an old man. To be successful. He doesn't even look physically like he used to. He looks shriveled. Well, that's that's Botox, plastic surgery, See, I thought filler. That, I thought that too. Bro, but you don't looks... get hotter. At 40 fucking no, five years old. No, I agree it old. is that, but I think he's also just getting old and losing some muscle. Losing legit muscle. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I meant, like, besides yeah. him cutting up his face. His arm, his arm isn't good. I do want to go over the scenario, though, to tell everybody. Oh, yeah, you want to go over this. Uh, what the Steelers need to get the into the playoffs. Or getting into the playoffs. So, before you guys, before we go, and we'll close on this if you're okay with that. We need these three things to happen. One, this week, we need this this week. We're not looking ahead, right? We're looking at this week. We need the New England Patriots to beat the Miami Dolphins. We need the Pittsburgh Steelers to defeat the Baltimore Ravens. And we need the Seattle Seahawks to beat the New York Jets. And if you parlay that right now, the payout is plus 777. Could you find a luckier number than 777? It's like there's an algorithm in your phone that's playing tricks on you. Like, I know we can get Matt Light to bet on stuff. Well, let's, just, yeah, because it was 776. I'm like, eh. Yeah. 778, again, that's good. That's too much. Yeah. 777, slot machine, Big Ben, like seven Super Bowls, seven heaven. Yeah. Seven minute abs. They're not six. I do eight minute abs. Step into my office. You're fucking fired. 777 is what we're going to need. So, guys, uh, biggest New England pick. Here's what we should do then, right? To have a perfect playoff weekend, here's what we need. First of all, I think we should all wake up, get some coffee at Starbucks for the Seattle Seahawks to defeat the New York Jets, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Then maybe we're a little we're tense, right? So we'll go to Robert Kraft's massage place and be a New England Patriots fan later on that afternoon to loosen up, right? And then go Steelers! We're going to fucking win in Baltimore. And that's what's going to happen. I think it's totally possible. But then the next week we need other stuff. Yeah, but we're not going to look. Other stuff. But we're not going to look. We're not going to look. But I'm going to tell you right now what we need. Uh, the Dolphins have to lose to the Jets. The Patriots have to lose to the Bills. And the Steelers got to send Deshaun Watson home. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Six things. They and they're playing better. They're saying it's like a 3% chance right now. The Steelers, I, I that $4,000 bet to me is a lock. Because... Even if they don't win this week, which I think the Steelers will, they're going to beat the fuck out of Cleveland at home. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson's bad. He went th 15 for 31. I think two interceptions. He sucks. Isn't that hilarious? Dude, ten, they're, they're fucked for 10 years. Isn't that hilarious? I, I love the it. Whole, the whole shebang. Whole shebang. You had a guy who wanted to be Cleveland for life. Baker Mayfield. Mm -hmm. You told him, get fucked. He played. He practiced one day. Beat the Raiders. The Raiders at the time were the hottest, one of the hottest teams in the NFL. This week, 
He put up 51 fucking points. Crazy. This is a crazy game. He's put up more points in one game than Watson has since he's returned. <laughs> Football, baby! So Cleveland, right? Yeah. That's so Cleveland. Cleveland sucks. Hate them. They do suck. Baltimore, we're coming for Fun. you. We want the gold. Uh, from the gateway.media, uh, part of the Pitts programming, the Pitts network. The Pitts. Dustin, is there anything you would like to say before we go? Happy New Year, happy holidays. Happy New Year, happy holidays. Here we go, Steelers.